Welcome back. This is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. Today, we're going to talk about one of my favorite nutrients, coenzyme Q10, or ubiquinone. Now, what is it? What does it do? And how much should we take? Now, let's get right into the details of this. Basically, it's a fat-soluble nutrient, and it's important for free radical scavenging. What that means is that it cleans things up cellular debris, damage, etc. So it's an important antioxidant, really. And it's important for mitochondrial synthesis of ATP. It's in the, it uses it to produce energy of the cell, ATP, right? So if you can clean things up and have more energy, basically it has an anti-aging properties, right? If you take CoQ10, you are kind of reversing the aging process. Your body can produce CoQ10 from tyrosine, and in your body, you'll have an oxidized form called ubiquinone and the reduced form of ubiquinol. We'll get into that a little bit later. Now, why would someone get deficient in CoQ10? Things like muscle pain, fibromyalgia, or cardiomyopathies, or the use of statin medications can also do that. Also, liver cirrhosis. So there are certain conditions that will deplete your CoQ10 you, and you would absolutely need to take additional CoQ10, especially if you're on a statin medication for cholesterol lowering. Now, let's get into what types of foods that we would utilize. So food sources is organ meats, animal proteins, and fatty fish. They have the highest levels, followed by oranges, strawberries, legumes, nuts, and seeds, okay? Now, the CoQ10 bioavailability is quite low, so it's not readily absorbed in our system. And the way we can increase the absorption is to emulsify or use an oil to help absorption in the gut. So they'll use an oil or emulsification process, or they'll try to make CoQ10 more water soluble so it can be absorbed easier in our GI tract. Now, you can also use pepperin, and that would increase the bioavailability by 30%. So there's two forms that we wanna talk about here, ubiquinone and ubiquinol. Ubiquinol, ubiquinone is, you use an oil base like an MCT or soy oil, to increase absorption by five times. Or you can make it more water soluble. That's another way. And oftentimes it's a yeast fermentation process to create CoQ10, right? Uh, they don't really extract it from animals, but they will use a yeast fermentation process uh, to use it commercially. Now there is another product called ubiquinol, which is two to three times more bioavailable um, than ubiquinone, right? I'm going back and forth with these words, but basically OL can be two to three times more bioavailable than NE, okay? But there's only one company that actually produces ubiquinol, and this is the name of the company, and it's the sole manufacturer. In terms of dosaging, it's pretty safe. They've used 1,200 to 2,000 milligrams of CoQ10 um, in different studies, but typically when you're on, let's say, a statin medication or you're deficient, we like to use anywhere from 100 to 300 milligrams per day, okay, and the half-life is about 33 hours. So you can take it once a day. So usually you will take it with a fatty meal or after meal for better absorption, or you take one of those products that has either uh, making it more water soluble or an MCT oil in there to help improve absorption. And some companies will use PPQ on top of ubiquinol to help and uh, to have a more enhanced effect in producing energy, especially for the nervous system. Okay, my name is Dr. Jen Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. And we'll see you guys next week on the healthy side. Have an awesome day.